Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and in this video we're going to try and fix this Joy-Con from the Nintendo Switch. This is a right hand Joy-Con, the one with the, you know, the A and the B etc. Now apparently the thing that's wrong with this is that it syncs up fine. Look here, when connected to the Switch it syncs physically but couldn't get any of the buttons to work though. So basically that's a really interesting fault. So it syncs up but nothing's happening. And I've never seen that before, so I'm really curious to find out what's wrong with this. So this was sent to me by Mike from 1UP Gaming, and you might have heard me mention his name before, because if you remember that PlayStation Vita game that I tried to repair, along with the little SD memory card as well, or the PlayStation Vita memory card, uh, he, when I, I bought the game from eBay off him, and basically uh, he recognised my eBay username, and he watches my videos over on YouTube so he threw a load of other things in the package that he thought I might like and uh, this one here I think is going to be a really interesting one what I'm thinking straight away I haven't put a multimeter near this yet I haven't done any testing with this at all but what I'm thinking is all of the buttons might have a ground connected to them so for example when we press this button here obviously it's just connecting two little bits together inside here you know like two little carbon tracks it's just uh, there's a little metal plate in here that shorts across them and it completes the circuit on that. So I'm thinking maybe each button has a ground that they're all in common with. So for example the ground of this is the same with the ground of that etc. And if none of them work I'm wondering maybe if the ground, the main ground or something is damaged. As I say that's only sort of what I'm thinking initially. It probably will turn out to be a chip or something like that. It might not even be repairable. But either way it's going to be interesting. Now I've got no way of testing it like this so I'm going to have to take apart a working Joy-Con. This is the right hand one. And then I'm going to put this in that one just to verify that it's not working and then start comparing this one with the working one and hopefully I might be able to see a difference somewhere and it would be interesting to see if we could fix it. Now obviously you can't use this as it is at the moment but I have got water damaged Nintendo Switches and I have got water damaged Joy-Cons so this would be perfect because the water is not going to damage the plastic on it it's the motherboard that fails so if I can put this motherboard in at least then I might be able to get a working Joy-Con out of a water damaged one. So let's get a Joy-Con, pop this in it and see what's happening. Right, okay, so this is a good motherboard here. As you can see, it's a, it's a different colour, but it pretty much looks identical as far as the chips and stuff are concerned. Well, let's put this in here and see what's happening. Right, okay, so I've got the bad motherboard in the good Joy-Con, so let's see now. Right, okay, so it syncs up there, it says paired. Okay, so did you see that? It's, it's a red one. So if you have a look there, you can see it's a red one there. So now, let's see, we can move it around there. Okay, will that work there? Hold on now. Let's go down to the buttons. Right, okay. Well, they're all working. Well, I don't know about the side ones yet. Yeah, it's low battery just, just because this switch hasn't been used in a while. Right, well they all appear to be working. I have got my theory as to what might have happened here. I'll, uh, let me just do a little bit more testing first. Well, that's fine. I mean this uh, stick here is ever so slightly uh, ever slightly out, but that's the stick itself, nothing to do with the, the motherboard. Uh, right, okay. Oh, well that's a bit of a shame because I was looking forward to seeing what was wrong with this one but obviously it is all okay which is obviously good but it's uh, it's bad for the video because it makes the video kind of pointless but uh, I think I the only one thing I've seen on this that didn't quite look right is this let me uh, take it apart again and show you 
look at the little battery contacts down here. Basically, the red wire goes to the bottom one, the black wire goes to the top one. And if you look at the black one, it is very dirty. So you can see the bottom one here is nice and shiny, and this one here is dirty. And it's the black one which is the ground. So, for example, let me show you on the good controller here. So, well, I say good, they're both good now, aren't they? So if we go onto the top terminal here, I've just got my meter set to continuity, look. So if I go onto the top terminal, you can see that this is the ground, because then if I go onto the ground of this connector here, you can see it shorting out. And for example, if I go onto, uh, you know, just any of the, the, the grounds on the actual board, the black one is the ground, and it's not the case when I go onto the bottom one, which is the red one. So if I go onto this one here, you can see it's not doing anything. So I'm just wondering in my head, if the uh, if that one was dirty, could it muck up the actual button presses? I wonder. I tell you what, let's uh, let's go on these buttons here, see what's happening. Actually, I tell you what, it's more likely that Mike would have tried this one here. So let's peel this off. That's what I was talking about the discs. Do you remember? these are the metal discs that then press against it so when you press these in they're basically shortened between the outer and the inner so let's see now which is the which is the ground so the outer one now let's try the inner okay so the inner one looks like it's the ground let me just double check that with the actual battery No, it's not. No, I was thinking that maybe these were going to be ground. So these are in common with each other, but the outer ones are not. But they're not going back to the battery ground. But they are going to these ones. So now if I go between here and here and press this button, I presume it will make the noise. Yeah. Hmm. There and here? No. Yes. Yes, and not the top. And if I go on the top and then press the button in. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh you know what? I don't know what could have been wrong with that, which is slightly annoying. I mean it's working fine now, so there's nothing I can do. I can't fault find it anymore. But it would have been nice to sort of guess what the problem is. I mean I'm I'm assuming that whatever connects up all the grounds on here was the thing that went faulty on it but what that is I don't know would it happen again I don't know I mean if it does fantastic I can do the video but for this at this moment in time it's all uh, it's all working it's all working okay right what I'm going to do is because obviously that last part of the video was just <laughs> installing a working motherboard into a working Joy-Con uh, let's try and do this one here so this basically says on this one again this is from Mike from 1UP Gaming and it basically says can't remember the main fault but the latch has come off the rail connector so this Joy-Con here is nearly complete actually but if you have a look oops right so basically we have the uh, this latch here you see should go in there so it looks like the kind of clip that folds down has gone so let's pop a battery in this one and let's see if we can get this one to work because this one here is just going to do the sync and the light. So let's leave that disconnected then we'll know whether that's the only fault on it. So let's pop the battery in from this one here because I believe it's the bottom connector here that does all the syncing up with the pins. I think this one is just for the lights and also the sync button. Let's plug that into the switch here.
Right, maybe that top one does need to be connected. I thought it would still sync up without that. Maybe there's other things disconnected in this. Tell you what, let's take this thing apart and let's see what's happening with it. Yeah, okay, so the actual bit you flip down is missing and also the white plastic looks ever so slightly. Looks like there's a little bit cracked away from it there. But see, all the pins are there. All that happens is when you put the connector down, it just puts pressure on it to make the pins touch against this one here. Uh, you know what, I'm looking there and that looks a little bit dirty, that looks a little bit corroded. I wonder what this bottom one's like, maybe this was water damaged in the past. Oh yeah, that's filthy. Yeah, look at that. Okay, now with water damaged stuff I don't want to spend too much time on it because most of the time you're uh, you're kind of wasting your time on it. Let's take this motherboard out and see what uh, see what the rest of it looks like. No water damage under there anyway. Don't think this has been water damaged. I'm just not sure why it's so corroded under that one little bit. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it with IPA, and then I'm going to clean these ones here with uh, a bit of IPA and also I'm just going to rub the fiberglass pen over it just to see if they clean up. So let's zoom right in on this. Let's get the IPA into each of the connectors as well just in case it might not just be the ribbon cable that's corroded, it might be corroded in here as well and in here for example. Okay, so that's zoomed right in there and you can see now the corrosion on there. So gently I'm just going to rub the fiberglass pen in line with it. Yeah, there it's really cleaning up. You know that that will do. Give it a little clean. You know, I don't think that was water damage. I'm wondering if it was just oxidised. You know, if it's just left open to the air. Because there's no water damage anywhere else. Maybe it needs to be in the connector in order to be kind of like, uh, you know, so the air doesn't get to it or something. I'm going to leave it at that. Well, oh, let that dry off now and see if that makes a difference. Just it roughly put back together. There's uh, the screws are missing and everything, but let's just see if it does anything now. No, it doesn't. That's interesting. Uh, let me have a look at those pins at the bottom. Oh, the pins are corroded as well. Right, okay, you see those pins there? They're also corroded. It's strange, it's like this rail here is water damaged, yet the rest is right. I wonder if I should swap the rail with another one, maybe. I'll clean up these pins first and see if that makes a difference. Right, okay, so as you can see, the pins definitely look cleaner now. Not perfect, but they're pretty good. Let's see if it makes, makes it connect now. I mean, I'm confident the lights are not going to work. In fact, you can see they're not working there. But 
I thought it would have connected. No. Really weird. Completely and utterly dead. Right, I suppose the only thing I can do with this one is start swapping parts over with this Joy-Con here to see if it's a motherboard problem or whether it is, for example, the rail. Yeah, but there's definitely nothing happening there at all. No? Well, okay, let's start swapping over with this one here, see if we can find out what the problem is. This is more interesting now because there is actually a proper fault on here that you can uh, sort of get your teeth into. Right, okay, this is interesting. It's flashing, but it's kind of flashing a bit weird, but that might be because it's not making a great contact. So what's happening now is this is the faulty Joy-Con, but with a good rail. So let's see now what happens when I connect it up to the switch. Excellent. Brilliant. Right, so it's to do with the rail. Uh, let's have a look here. Okay, so grey's the correct colour. It looks like it's charging. Remember, this one didn't come with a battery. Right, let's uh, test the buttons. Right, so the shoulder buttons are not working because remember the connection on the motherboard is bad. But yet the light's working. Well, okay, so even as it is now, if I get a replacement rail or look at this rail closely to find out why it's not working, it's a pretty good Joy-Con, it just means that it can't be used like this with the shoulder buttons. But maybe I will be able to get a good connection on that motherboard. At least I know what I'm fault finding now because I wasn't sure if it was a motherboard problem or a problem with this. So I think I'm going to have a take, uh, take a closer look at this, see if I can get this rail working. I think that looks okay. I'm just going to check for continuity between the pins here and the pins on the ribbon cable. That's certainly strange because I only did it roughly, but even for example if I hold the metal against all of that, it's shorting on every single pin here, so that says to me that there is continuity between here and here, and roughly when I was going across the pins they did look to be coming up on the right side. So uh, I think I'm going to give it another, another little clean here, because it still looks a little bit oxidised. Right, this time I'm just purely going to connect the bottom rail, and I'm not going to worry about that lighting rail, just in case there's something in there that's putting a short on it. There we go, I can hear it working. Look. Right, so that rail is working. Right, okay, uh, that's good. Now, is it the lighting rail that's knocking it out, or is it just because I've cleaned it up? So now let's try to put the lighting rail back in it. It's starting to make progress now, you see. So on this one it's not making any uh, any connection at all. Oh, there you go, lights on, look, when I put pressure on it, look at that. Right, okay, uh, that's good. Let's strip this down more, see it's still on now, it's gone off, so obviously it, I need to, do you know what, I need to find out the name, I think they're called a, a ZIF connector, a Zero Inforce, oh I'm not sure, Zero Insertion Force Connector, ZIF, I wonder is that a ZIF connector, I'm going to Google it because this must be a common problem when the, the clip, you know, the, the clamp falls off it, so for example you can see this one here on the good Joy-Con, it's this little thing here, so when this is open 
you put the cable in and then basically you clamp this down to force the pins to crush onto the ribbon cable. I'm going to Google if there's a nice easy fix. I'm sort of thinking about maybe a tiny bit of plastic and then putting a bit of tape on it or a bit of plastic and then hot glue gun or maybe even just hot glue gun while holding it down. But somebody else might have a much better solution so there's no point in me trying to reinvent the wheel if there's already a good fix out there. So let me get back to this in a little while. Right, good old YouTube, I uh, typed it into Google and this particular video came up here. Easy Ribbon Cable Connector Fix, comma, Repair by Austin underscore Semiconductor. Now, I didn't watch the whole video because I didn't need to because only the first section of it seemed to be about the actual repair. But basically, using some plastic, you just cut out the little bit that you need and then he kind of uh, put a little bend on it to make it slightly more, I suppose, to put a little bit more pressure on it. So cutting it there and then a little bit down here so it's got a bit of give and just shoves it into place. Now what I'm going to do is, because this is such a, such a small one, he was doing it on a big keyboard repair, but I'm just going to do it on this and then I'm going to put a bit of captain tape over it. But you never know, it might be, it might be okay. It's worth a go. This is just like... Uh, I can't remember, pun it off plums or nectarines or something. And uh, it's in recycling, so it's not going to cost me anything apart from a bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this out completely so I can get to it, because at the moment I'm trying to fiddle it into here. So uh, let me just disconnect the battery and the ribbon cable. Can I force that under there or not? No, I don't think that's going to go in on this one. No. But what I could do is I could bend it round on itself so it's like a spring, put it on there and then put captain tape on so then it's putting pressure on those pins. I was hoping to force this underneath but it's not going and I don't want to mess with those pins too much. Yeah, this uh, plastic's too thick. I'm not going to have any other thinner plastic, I don't think. So it's time to give up on trying to bodge up this connector here. Whatever I do, it's just not working. So maybe the technique works for larger connectors, but on this smaller one here, nothing's happening. And the problem is, when I put it in, I need so much pressure to get all the buttons to work. So I can get the lights to work very easily and the sync button, but when it comes to the SL and SR button, I really have to squeeze it down. In fact, the SR button I can get to work quite consistently, but the SL button, I need to squeeze it with so much force, there's no way that a hot glue gun or any bit of plastic and captain tape is going to have the same force as me squeezing it as hard as possible. So what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to try and do, I have got a water damaged little board here, and you can see it's the same, uh, it's from the same Joy-Con, and this one has got the little black flap. So I'm going to zoom in using the macro feature on the camera, I'm going to try to take this one off and I'm going to try to put it on here. Now that's a lot easier said than done because I believe there's tiny little holes in here that the contacts have to go through. Also, I haven't got a microscope still, still haven't got one. Uh, I might connect up my, uh, well my TV's broken, I might connect up a monitor to my camera to try to get it on a larger screen so I can see what I'm, I'm doing. But if I can swap this one over to here, then this might provide enough force in order to make it work again. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. Okay, so let's try and remove this one here. These things snap quite easily when you don't want them to, but now that I want to pull it out... Oh, there we go, there we go. So it comes off that way. It comes off this way. Is that the side going to come off or not? Okay, that way. So now, this one needs to go on this way. And it's going to have to go on over the, uh, the certain contacts that it's going to have to go over. 
I want to make sure I keep it the right way round. <sighs> just pinged off. Surely I will be able to find it, it's pretty big. Oh, thank God I found it and it only took about five minutes. It's really hot here in the UK today and the last thing I want to be doing is on my hands and knees looking with my eyes three inches away from the carpet trying to find something as small as this. Again, you think it's big and it is, well I mean it, it is pretty big compared to other things but it's still, uh, it's still not that easy to find. Luckily I found that, right, hopefully this won't fling off again. So now I'm going to have to try to get it back on here but it's got to go over certain pins do you know what, I'm going to use bigger tweezers because I think, because these have such a fine tip that's why I'm struggling I'm going to try and use these ones maybe Angled, you have to put it out to get it in. Let me try it almost flat. Do you know what those tweezers are not better, they're worse because they're covering up. Yeah, the finer tip ones are better. There you go, that looks like the right angle there. Oh, oh I thought I was getting it. So basically in here there's tiny little holes and uh, there's some kind of like cutouts at the bottom but there's also holes going right the way through it. There you go. And you've got to get some of the pins through the holes and that's what makes it really hard. keep at it but I don't think I'm going to win on this one. Right okay look it looks like it's game over basically I was looking at the pins and they looked a little bit bent and stuff because remember this has had a lot of abuse now with me shoving in the plastic and putting captain tape and peeling it on and off and I'll straighten them up and look they've snapped from this bit here now remember I said before that it was kind of cracked but they've snapped on the crack bit so now it looks like that is game over because even if I do manage to get this on it's not going to put the pressure down is it so I'll try a little bit longer I'll just uh, whiz through this fast forward and it just 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 to see I'll give it another five or ten minutes okay time to call it a day I am getting absolutely nowhere so the pins have snapped on the connector there when I push this in now it's not getting anything before I was getting basically all the buttons working apart from the SL now I'm not even getting the lights lighting up so I completely mucked that one up but to be fair to myself the connector had already had a crack on it so maybe even if I had done hundreds of those lids putting those lids on maybe I still would have struggled maybe the pins were slightly misaligned I don't know if I had a microscope to zoom in, possibly it would have been easier. I'm really, I'm really not too sure. I haven't done enough of them. Sometimes I've done it where they've popped off and I've managed to get them back on. But I was taking one off another one and putting it on here after messing around with this for over an hour beforehand. So maybe I bent the pins when I was trying to get the plastic and stuff in there. Now as well as that, what's happening is this bottom ribbon cable has got a very tiny tear just on the right hand track. So although it is working, you can see now it's moving up and down and capture taken it's not attaching to the console and also it's not charging so it would only work as a wireless and then when the battery goes flat it's not going to work at all so uh, well it's, it's not indicating that it's charging whether it's actually charging or not I don't know but it's not indicating anyway but even so it's not attaching to the console so if you have a look at the switch here you can see that it's showing that one Joy-Con's connected but the other one's not so when it comes to playing the games it's not going to work uh, it's not going to work because even if I have it attached on it, it's going to think it's wireless. So, unfortunately, this one is just going to have to be used as spares or repair. So, big thanks to Mike from 1UP Gaming for giving me the opportunity to do the video. 
There is one perfect motherboard from what I can see, and I've got numerous good spares on this one here. Remember, there's loads of things that can be used off this to fix other ones, so it's not a complete waste of time. It's just unfortunately I couldn't get this particular one working, which, which is a shame because really the only thing that was wrong with it was that connector on the motherboard because do you remember to begin with it didn't work at all but by cleaning up the pins I did get so far but the connector on the motherboard let me down so um, yeah unfortunately this is not to be this is just going to be used to fix other Joy-Cons yeah so apologies that the video didn't really have a, a good outcome and it really wasn't that interesting. But what is interesting to, for me is that those connectors are not that easy to fix. So on certain bigger ribbon cables, yes, you might well be able to slot a piece of plastic in and put a bit of tape or a bit of hot glue gun. But I think when it comes to those smaller ones, personally, I'm not going to waste my time trying to do that in the future. Unless this was a, a particularly hard one. It's just that it needed so much force to crush down. Just those little lids, you don't think there's much force on them, but there must be quite a bit of force because I really had to pinch it very hard to get the buttons to work. So yes, that fix might work on bigger ribbon cables or maybe different, slightly different designs, but on these Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, I don't think that any amount of glue gun or captain tape is going to hold them down in place. So, you know, I have learned something from that respect there. Uh, yeah, but that is it. Hopefully next time I will be more successful. So uh, yeah, give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.